Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. Oh, our video is good. I don't know what happened, but it's green. All right. <laughs> okay. So, oh, it went right again. That was such a short-lived party. What's the deal with the okay. Is it the only way they can hear us? They can answer questions? Yeah, I think the, the audio situation is the more important one. This is good. This is kind of like... I mean, I kind of assumed the the webinar situation would be like this because it's just, I don't know, we've never done it before. So a little bit of a test drive here today. So thank you. Oh, there's 32 of us now. So thank you everyone for coming out and um, choosing to be a part of this like kind of like cooperative group effort to to go live, I guess. So what I would like to do, oh, I am so excited. Sorry, I'm like kind of reading and talking. So I have, we were worried that no one was going to come. So I have this like huge list on my notebook of questions that we were going to like talk about amongst ourselves if none of you were there to ask us questions. But since you're here and there's lots of you, I figure you can just start asking us um, anything you want to know. I want to do this AMA style. So um, it doesn't necessarily have to be music related. Ask me anything. AMA, ask me anything. And then, I mean, you can talk to this guy too. By the way, this is, you usually don't see him, but this is Logan, the editor. This hand. Hi. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm working on that too. Yeah. Uh, he lives in Toronto, and right now he's just down in. Sask- I, I live in Saskatchewan, yeah. so he's here just because we have mutual family in this part of the world. So we figured this was like the one day of the entire year that we were in the same room. <laughs> so we figured we'd actually get together and yeah, answer some questions. So there's still a lot of audio issues going on. And I, I really don't know if that's just a factor of my laptop being really old. Yeah, Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to live in Toronto too, and I miss it passionately. I do do the thumbnails. Yeah, I do all the editing. Yeah. All the pictures. Oh, hey, well, we answer, I'd answer a Game of Thrones question. You don't even have to, like, qualify that with a just kidding. <laughs> hey, New Zealand. Oh, what time is it in New Zealand right now? It's probably tomorrow. Is it the 30th? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, my Christmas was incredibly busy. We had a big gathering of like 30 people in one house and that was fun. It was, it was, it was tiring. <laughs> I slept a lot. Uh, okay. So what, why don't you, you, you ask me some of these questions. We'll do like teamwork here. You mean I ask you? What mm-hmm. presents did I, sorry. Yeah, okay. What presents did you get? <laughs> I got some exercise clothes. I got a bomber jacket. Dude, which is really sweet. It's sweet. It has like cherry blossoms on the arm. It's super girly. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I almost picked one up. Yeah, what'd you get for Christmas? Uh, not a lot. Mostly money. I didn't ask for anything this year. I, I got everything I wanted. Worst, I didn't get him anything. Yeah. Damn it. He didn't get me anything either. Yeah, I feel bad about that. <laughs> You don't believe in Christmas? <laughs> oh, hey, Tsunami. Oh, you can't see her, sir. Oh, you can see her tail. <laughs> Tsunami says hi with her tail. Okay, what else you got? What do got? What pieces are you learning? Oh, what pieces, what pieces am I learning right now? Oh, my goodness. I'm still, I'm the worst. I kind of like, I need to commit to some pieces and I just like flit around them. So right now I'm in the process of going through box inventions just because I feel like I skipped them and they're like grade seven, grade eight level. Um, But they're like really, really good study pieces. And when I was learning piano um, back in the day, like when I was kind of an intermediate student, I skipped right over all of the, the easy Bach and I can't really play the difficult Bach, but I want to. So I'm like trying to get myself to go through it, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's not that I don't like the inventions. It's just they're not as exciting as some of Bach's other music, so it kind of feels like a drag to get through them sometimes. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I I was briefly looking at some Brahms waltzes, but, like, it was only for a couple hours, so I can barely call that a serious endeavor. (laughs) What do you play? He doesn't play piano. I just want to, like, get you in this a little bit. He plays guitar. Yeah. Are you learning anything fun? Uh, No, I haven't learned anything in a good while. He just jams. Yeah, I jam. Like this. This one's a D. <laughs> you play the bass like way up here. Oh my goodness, it's so backwards. I know. It's... I can't. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, air miming, not a thing. Okay. You should have got a new sweater. I agree. I don't have a sweater. Do you need a sweater? Yeah, I needed one. A special one. 
like a big cozy like like down to your knees kind of like dress you know mm-hmm. you're a man not a dress sweater okay men can wear dress sweaters what am i saying the handaches is that normal handaches um no i don't think that's normal starting piano is that what it says yeah. someone's just starting piano and the hand i don't see it do you need the mic into the room oh yeah yeah i guess oh let me let me move it in a way where it's not like right in the middle of the screen okay yeah. let's is, is that it? better well he also talks quieter too i can yell <laughs> I got a cat on me, so I got to talk a little. Quiet. Yeah, I wonder if I do like a little. Can where's she's, the cat? She's right here. She's How here. can I not? This is hard. Oh, there she is. This cat. Okay, I might as well take the video. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that tsunami is kind of a jerk. Um, she seems like cute and all when she's on the screen, but like she just doesn't really like anyone except for me, and she somehow likes Logan even though. He is literally literally only over at my house once a year. So I don't know. He's like the animal whisperer. Okay. So I want to get back to that hand aches question. I see it now. So you started playing piano and your hand aches after the session. Is that normal? I don't think that's normal. I think you might want to make sure that the bench is at the right height. Um, sometimes that's like the difference between like, if your hands are at a weird angle, when you play that can create cramps and stuff like that. Um, and you also want to make sure that you're not sitting too close because that'll put you in an unnatural situation. I always do like the, (laughs) with little kids, we call it karate pose. Sorry, where's my other hand? There it is. Okay. So you like stick your arms out in front of you, like karate. I don't, I never did karate. I don't know if that's actually (laughs) a thing. That's just what the piano adventure books tell me to do. But anyway, you sit on the bench on the edge and then you stick out your hands like this. And then if your knuckles reach where the, the base of where the keys start. So like basically the, the wood of the piano, like where the, the keys begin. Um, if they reach there, then you're in the perfect spot. But if you're like, if it's like reaching past there, you're too close. If you're like not quite reaching there, then you're, am I making, is this making sense to you? Yeah. It's hard to explain this without, I I guess there's a piano behind me, but that's a whole other, whole other adventure figuring that out. Um, So usually it's just posture problems that lead to hand cramps and things like that. But I will say if you're, if you don't, um, if you're just starting and then you all of a sudden start practicing like three hours a day, um, you'll probably run into some of the same problems just because if your hands are, it's like, it's like exercising. Um, Again, something I'm not an authority on, but if you just all of a sudden try to like do crazy heavy weights, you'll just hurt yourself. Right. So with piano too, you kind of have to like, like work your way up to longer practice times. So anyway, hopefully, hopefully some of that helps, but cramping is bad. Like you definitely want to, to, to troubleshoot that. Even if it means cutting back on the amount you practice for a little bit. Okay. I'm going to scroll up. Okay. Next question was, uh, why did you two start doing music together? Yeah, that's a good question. Do I have an answer for that? I mean, partially it's because you were moving out of Toronto and we wanted some way to stick together. And it was uh, mm-hmm. an easy project to do because we both really love music. I like instrumental music. She likes classical music. Mm-hmm. And she teaches it. And why not bring the love of music out to the internet? Yeah, actually, we talked about th- doing it for probably two years before Raver actually started doing the yeah. videos. Um, he, We both have flexible jobs yeah. more or less like he does art and he does like lots of freelance stuff and I teach piano so I make my own hours too yeah. and we both had room to do a project and I didn't know anyone else who would have been flexible enough to collaborate with um but their skills are really complimentary yeah exactly so yeah. you're I don't know <laughs> I mean we get a long time we can make solid videos at least you know yeah, I couldn't even, I, I, I couldn't do it. Like if I had to edit it myself, um, cause he does like all the editing, all the images and stuff like that. Um, it just, it's such a huge time investment. So if it, if it's like one person doing all of that, like I, I don't think I would have been able to continue doing it past like six months. So yeah, I don't know. It was just kind of random. Like there wasn't like a really a deci- decisive, like we're doing this. It yeah. just kind of, we had some conversations like, yeah, let's make some YouTube videos. Yeah. And it really was pretty good. You guys are a really great audience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't get a lot of, like, trash comments. No, like, almost never. I kind of marvel at that. Like, you guys are amazing. Like, you'll leave these, like, 
really interesting paragraph long thoughts and like it's not just like like sometimes it'll be like good videos stuff like that but a lot of the time you guys will leave like really thoughtful comments that i think if people scroll down um, and read your comments they'll learn something new and i really really like that i don't know like how we've managed to like gather like an awesome little community but yeah you guys are <laughs> super awesome i brag i brag about you guys all the time oh, yeah. so okay uh, next question is do you lessen with the skype no, I've been asked that before, though. I, I <laughs> I'm apprehensive of overcommitting myself because I'm already pretty bitty. Biz, uh, I'm bitty. pretty bitty. <laughs> Get my like Saskatchewan hick accent going on. Yeah. Um, no offense to Hicks in Saskatchewan. Hicks is a derogatory term. Oh, I'm like these are the things that Logan cuts out when he edits. I gotta like work on this like <laughs> live censorship thing. Uh -huh. uh, what was the question? I just lost track. <laughs> Do you lessons of the Skype? No, no um, it's not right now. it is something that I, I think about. It's just not something that I'm ready to commit to because I'm already very busy. And I also really value having like a schedule that isn't crazy. Like I don't work 80 hour weeks and I love that. <laughs> I like having a life. Yeah. Um, but maybe one day I think about it. Okay. Uh, next question is, I have learned the notes on the grand staff, mm -hmm. but now, how important is it to learn to learn intervals? Very! Learn the intervals, because reading is not just, reading music is not just going, um, okay, this is an A, this is a B, this is a C. You also have to judge notes against each other. So you want to think about like, like when you read, it's like when you, when you read a book, you're not just reading, and then the boy, I'm making up a story. Um, you don't just read word by word, you kind of glance at the whole sentence. And that's what reading intervals helps you be able to do. Um, it helps you identify to glance the relationships between the notes. So instead of like, it's awesome to, to be able to do the notes quickly, but then you also need to see like the, the forest, what is that phrase? The forest from the trees or whatever. Yeah. From the trees. Yeah, yeah. So learn intervals. It will help so much. Oh. <laughs> No, <laughs> I play bad jazz. I've done jazz before. Um, I cannot improvise with jazz. Um, I can learn jazz music, but it's a struggle for me. Like it's, um, it's not something I've ever specialized in. I've done a couple songs here and there, but yeah, I've never like actually committed to doing a jazz course or things like that. That's on my to-do list in the future that, or I guess my bucket list, if I had a piano bucket list, um, learn how to do jazz. Cause I have a lot of students ask about it. And I can like guide them to some sheet music and stuff, but I don't have, I don't know, like a lot of knowledge in there. I'm much more on the, the classical side and even some pop to, to a certain extent I can teach pop, but yeah, jazz is totally out of my league. I love jazz though. Jazz is amazing. Like if I could rock out some Gershwin, I'd be super happy. <laughs> a Rhapsody in Blue is like my dream. <laughs> it's one day. Do you have any plans to add a forum section to uh, the site? A forum? Yeah. So we can get a more interactive community. I've never actually thought about that. It's not a bad idea. What do you think? I think we could do that. I wonder how hard it is. <laughs> it was like so complicated troubleshooting this video. <laughs> and by the way, it's still red. I can see that it's red. And I appreciate your patience in watching this video, even though the I don't even know what you're able to see right now. If it's like super bad. But <laughs> yeah, we're like we're like uh planning stuff today. Yeah. That's part of our part of our get together is we like talk about the future of our channel and well we only did it for one year but it's a tradition now this is the second year <laughs> um yeah so that's you know what forums I'm writing that down right now I'm gonna try to write that down All right. that would actually be really cool do you have any plans to do uh, more frequent live streams I don't know <laughs> see how this one goes I guess <laughs> um our our kind of thought going into this was. We'll do it, and if no one comes and no one shows up, that's okay. It was a good learning experience, um, and if it goes well, then we'll do more um, in some interval of time. I don't know how how often do you think we should do them if we did something like this? I guess it would just be me. Yeah, Rick said weekly. He'd like to do weekly. Whoa. That might be a little much, but we'll see. I don't know. That's up to you. I won't be here for them anymore, and Rick's. Uh... Yeah, it's easy for you. Hey, yeah, you don't yeah. have to edit the. <laughs> Fifty-one weeks out of the year, I'll be missing. So, um, but you guys would like be interested in more of these. Um, we could even like plan specific topics too. Like we don't even just have to, cause I like, this is a general, um, I, I keep wanting to say podcast webinar. 
this is like a like a casual webinar we're just like getting together to chat about random things but yeah actually i think it'd be super fun to do webinars on like really specific things if you guys were into that i i'd be into that this is kind of this is kind of fun who's your favorite composer ah <laughs> <laughs> um i like tchaikovsky why I don't know. I just, I just really like his music, but, um... He was really troubled. Yeah, he was troubled, and his, yeah, nothing really went well for him. No. Um, I also do with Grieg, because I really love the whole... Grieg is awesome, yeah. yeah. Grieg, um, his lyric pieces are some of my favorite piano pieces to teach, and they're really good, like, intermediate level. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Grieg's a good one. I mean, Chopin is, like, a standard, and if you would have asked me 10 years ago, I would have, like, not even hesitated to say Chopin. <laughs> it's really hard, though, because I like different composers for different reasons. Um, I actually think that Debussy is one of my favorites, because Debussy is the kind of composer that doesn't necessarily demand your full attention like if you're listening to beethoven if you're listening to mozart it's like you can't can't just like put that on the background and then go do something like it's too intense and too demanding so Debussy to me is like if i'm working on a project or if i'm writing or if i'm doing like literally anything else Debussy is like ambient and atmospheric and mood building so it's really good for like I feel like this is a bad answer because I'm saying I like Debussy because he's background music, but in a way it me so good. Yeah, it makes me listen to him more though, because it's more versatile music, I think. I don't know. That's okay, that's my answer. I say Debussy. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I'm just reading through what some of these. What is your opinion on atonal modernist classical music? Um <laughs> I haven't ever really gotten into super atonal music. Um, it's kind of like with metal. I They're very different styles, but bear with me with this comparison. But like metal music um, is really amazing for people who love metal music, but it's hard to grasp because it doesn't have like natural melodies and stuff. Um, so atonal music is like that for me. It, it doesn't, it's hard for me to grasp. Uh, it doesn't have like, obvious melodies um the keys are often like really they usually have really weird key signatures that don't sound like traditional music and i don't know maybe i am a traditionalist but like it's just i don't know i've, I've played some atonal music i I've, i don't know if i'm gonna say his name right there's a canadian composer named pierre gallant gallant oh yeah we did a little bit of him didn't we did we i think so Oh, you mentioned him. Um, I learned he did a variations on Land of the Silver Birch, which is a Canadian folk song. And I would consider that to be a really atonal piece. It was super fun to learn. So maybe I'm just like uneducated in atonal music. I've never done an exam on atonal music, so I've never had like a reason to study it or like a natural interest for it. These are really roundabout answers. I hope you guys are bearing with me. <laughs> Do you have any favorite uh, musical composers or movie composers? Um, I mean... Or or Andrew Lloyd Webber, probably, because he did, like, all the, um, like, standard ones that I've been teaching forever, like, all, like Phantom of the Opera and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. um, I really like Jan Tiersen. He's another one that I love teaching. Like, if you've seen the movie Amelie, uh, Jan Tiersen is the guy who did, like, all the, the soundtrack for Amelie, and he does a lot of, like, really interesting, sometimes really weird music, too, but a lot of really pretty piano stuff. Like, Valse Amelie and Comptine's Ultra Et. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> I don't know. He knows slight amounts of French. Oh, I can't do the cool. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say Comptine's Autre Et? Comptine. Comptine. Something, about sp something about spring. I can only really read French, so I'm not really super good at like, speaking it. But yeah, check out Jan Tiersen. Actually, check out those pieces, um, Valst Amelie, and actually anything from Amelie, because it's really good um intermediate music that sounds like way fancier and like way more difficult than it actually is to play so i like teaching it because it's like show off pieces right <laughs> the students can learn them pretty easily and they just sound like wildly fancy what is the hardest piece jazz of music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. every video what is the hardest piece of music you've ever learned Lee lists liebestrom so i'm pointing okay where's my point finger lists liebestrom number three it is so hard Oh my goodness, I like, I, I, I killed myself learning that piece and I'm still so bad at it. Oh, shout out to Danny Elfman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Home Alone. Appreciating all that good music. I haven't seen it. Oh, he also did a music for the Simpsons. He did like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's what it is. Everything 90s is pretty much Danny Elfman. Yeah, I didn't know his name. 
Uh, excuse me a second. If you could play another instrument, which one would it be? I love. Oh, and actually, someone just uh, sorry. Um, de Depi Vimu. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I pronounced it horribly. Um, yes, I'm glad you also love Jan Tiersen. And you actually just reminded me of another um, more modern piano composer who's like so cheesy, but actually like his music is super fun. Is Yanni? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you see a picture of him? Yeah, yeah, he's so cheesy. Like, he has, when you're, like, reading his music books, he'll, like, you know where it says, like, Allegro and things like that? He'll play it, like, with inward reflection. Or, or like, that's how his, like, playing instructions. Um, but his music's actually, like, Marching Season or One Man's Dream. Um, those are super fun pieces to play. So, anyway, it's, I saw Yawn, and it made me think of Yanni. Uh, let's see, you want to get to the next one? What? Which one would you rather play if you were playing piano? Oh, like if I could play another musical instrument? Sure. Well, can I, I, I can tell you a story that involves him. What, the cello? <laughs> you know the, the cello story, story. I'm talking about. Cello story. Okay, so one day I was like, cellos are awesome. I want to learn how to play the cello. And I taught piano lessons at a music store. So there were like music instruments everywhere. I got a cello. I took it down to my piano studio because I guess I wasn't teaching that day or something. And I spent like two hours learning like some cello rudiments and it's working really hard. So um, this was at the time when I was living in a house with four boys and yeah. you were one of, them. one of them. Yep. So anyway, I took it home and I had my cello there and Logan being a guitar player was like, oh, fun, a cello. <laughs> and, and he was like playing it for like half an hour. And was doing like infinitely better than I had done in like my two or three hours of practice. And it was so discouraging. I was like, my fingers were like, Ugh. and he, he was just like doing like a little, you were doing like a little cello jam. So that was the end of my cello experience. <laughs> I think I'm too competitive. You're a little bit competitive. Yeah. <laughs> I would go back to the cello though, because cellos are beautiful. I actually really like oboes too. Yeah. I, I think. Oboes when I play the oboe. That's what I yeah. really play in high school. Oh, really? What did you end up playing? Trombone. Really? You got long arms. You can do this. <laughs> but, <all right. laughs> I did the flute for one year. That's a good one. Yeah. That's also my flute. I, I tried playing a flute recently, and I, I can't make the tone anymore. I don't know if I have, like, good lung control or something. Have you tried composing for yourself? Like, have I written music? I think that's sort of the question. Is that the question? I don't see it. It's oh, yes, yes. Um, I've been songwriting since I was very, very small. I have hilarious, I, I've kept like all of the lyrics and, and music that I've written over the years. And I have some really hilarious like pop songs from when I was seven years old. Like, um, There's More Than a Million You was a pretty good title. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know, I wrote a lot of like, um, just like silly pop songs. Um, but yeah, I, I do composing, but more, um, more vocals. So I was in a band for many years called The Criminal Kid, and I did all of the, I did a little bit of keyboard, but I mainly wrote like lyrics and melodies and stuff like that. So I've done a lot of writing. I'm just not a lot of piano writing. I don't think I'm very good at it. I've written a couple things for this channel, like. The intro. Oh yeah, well the <laughs> intro doesn't count. <laughs> it's just like a little noodle. But like, I did like the, I wrote a pentatonic song um, when we were learning about pentatonic scales, yeah. and I wrote. There's like one other one. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what kind of hobby? What's your favorite hobby outside of music? Reading. Reading. Cool. I like. I'm so cool. I like painting. Sometimes I play Rocket League. What's Rocket League? It is a car soccer. This is embarrassing, but it's so fun. What is it? It's I car, don't understand. It's, it's car soccer. What is car? I don't get it though. You play soccer with cars. Is this like in real life? No. <laughs> what although is it? Then? Although they do it in real life and it looks hilarious. Is it like a video game? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm very like maybe I am technology challenged. Maybe this is like a self aware moment. Feel sorry, guys. I'm the guy that does this one else. But yes, ask me questions about books. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you maybe you don't want to. There's two topics, books and food, that like ask me at your own peril because I might not be able to stop talking. <laughs> Just warning you. What is Mozart in the jungle? That's a movie? What? Where do you see that? Oh hey. <laughs> Oscar is a cellist. Hello, fellow cellist. Well, what am I saying? Fellow cellist? Oh my goodness. I wish. A fellow person who has touched the cello? Yeah, Logan is the one who does the thumbnails yeah. to answer that question. Okay. Um, Mozart in the Jungle. 
you want me to watch it. Okay, what is, is this like a thing on YouTube or is this like a movie? You'll have to let me know in the comments. Yeah, this is delay in chat, so it's a little, little. Yeah, let me grab this. I'm going to, I have my notebook for taking notes like this. I am writing down Mozart in the jungle. Okay, so just tell me when you're home. Does it take you to learn all the major minor scales? Commercial, harmonic, melodic, and variation? I think. Maybe years. I'm just starting that, maybe. I think the push for me to learn them was when I was doing my grade nine RCM exam, because you have to do, um, I don't think anymore, but I know when I did it, you had to know all the majors and all the minors and same with grade 10. I think that I, I knew them before, but that was like the first time I ever had to like know them all at the same time. Um, it was, if it wasn't for the exam, um, I probably wouldn't have learned them all. Um, I, oh, that's a blooper, <laughs> cat, <yes>. butt. <laughs> yeah. Um, Scales are important. Like it's good to have an understanding of different keys, especially for songwriting and jamming and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. Probably a year would make sense. It took me a year to do my grade nine. So I, I'd say a year to do all the technique that goes along with that. Well, thanks, Olivia. What do you think of Crime and Punishment? I've never read Crime and Punishment. <laughs> I've been told that's Dostoevsky, right? Um, I... I guess we don't get like instant feedback, but that is definitely on my list because I really like Tolstoy and I want to get more into the Russian authors. So yes, that is like, that is near the top of my list. Would you read any science fiction authors? Um, I haven't gotten into science fiction. The closest I've gotten to that is, um, well, I guess that's not science, science fiction at all. I've been reading um, the Dark Tower series by Stephen King and that's more like fantasy. So no, but if you have any good science fiction recommendations, I'd love to hear them because I'm always looking for, for good books to read. Uh, Tsunami cameo. Yeah. Oh, Mozart oh. in the jungle is a show on Amazon. I didn't, Amazon has shows. Oh yeah. Like a TV station kind of it's thing. It's like a competitor for uh, Netflix. On Amazon? Yeah. That's cool. So it's based on an auto autobiographical. <laughs> autobiographical book on an oboist by an oboist about her experiences playing in the orchestras that sounds amazing i totally want to watch that i'm gonna make a note of that is it um is it like a free show or is it like with netflix where you have to pay like i don't know what netflix, like 10 bucks a month or something like that on Amazon. i'm gonna check that out thank you for the recommend no i don't have a youtube channel i just i do this and do this will you ever have a youtube channel with Gaming? No, no. Not gaming? gaming? No, gaming is saturated. I do an art channel, though. I've been thinking about it. So, would that be like, um, I've seen channels and videos where you, like, watch someone draw? Like, that kind of thing? Yeah, I'd probably do tutorials or else mm -hmm. like, Photoshop or whatever else. Yeah. That's a really good idea. There is there. Yeah. Well, you already know it. Edit videos. <laughs> and actually, if you're doing um, art videos, then all you have to do is, like, screen capture. You don't even really have to show your face. Oh, it's true, yeah. Not that that came out as an insult. Class. Did she stab you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, she's a jerk. Yeah. But okay, that wasn't malicious. That was just ignorant. Yeah. Are you going to continue doing videos for the rest of your SM grades? Yeah, I think I am. And I'm at about the point where it's time to start some of the grade three stuff. Um, I've always kind of been a fan of sequential. I know I have a lot of viewers who want to see more advanced pieces and stuff like that, uh, stuff that's a little bit more challenging. Um, but in terms of like flow, I've always liked the idea of starting from basics and working through the grades um, in terms of content. So yeah, I think we're going to get into grade three stuff right away, like in the new year, that's on my to-do list. And I've planned to spend about six months or so per grade. Um, that may change depending on, I don't know, it might change, but that's where, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do right now. Okay. I want to make a clarification on the scales thing. I, it wouldn't take a year of solid effort to learn. If you wanted to memorize all the scales and stuff, and that was like your project and that was the only thing you wanted to do, then I bet you that would only take you like a month. Like, I don't think it would have to take a year, but I just did it slowly because I was doing it in conjunction with all my other pieces. Do you have an opinion on the movie Whiplash? Oh my goodness, that was such a stressful movie. I was like, I was like filled with adrenaline. It was a, it was an amazing movie. And my fiance is a drummer, so he like got a special. He's actually seen it like five times now. But like <laughs> the first time we watched it, I was, 
I, I was so stressed out. Like I was like practically hyperventilating. It's so good though. I mean, obviously not lessons for a music teacher in the movie Whiplash, but good movie nonetheless. Yeah. Highly recommend. Hey, Alicia, what are marshmallows made of? I don't know. Okay. Sugar. Yeah. And gelatin. Yeah. Wow. Was that a question? <laughs> awesome um for science fiction ancillary justice I've, I've actually think i actually think i've heard about that one okay. i'm writing that down can you recommend some keyboard songs for what level important can you play this for me for me which beethoven sonata would you recommend to me to learn i have learned the moonlight and mm -hmm. also keep I also have started number 25 in D major. Also, could you do some videos on specific Beethoven sonatas? Yeah, I'd love to do Beethoven sonatas. Actually, I think of all the sonatas that exist, Beethoven's are like my favorite. Mozart's are cool, and I, I get why people love them, but I really like Beethoven's. Hang on a second. I'm going to actually grab my book. Okay. These are a mess, of course. Logan! Yeah. Say something! Uh, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I going to tell you because I, I just forget which one it is off the top of my head i learned the first sonata and it's not super hard actually and it's really cool uh the, the first one is an f minor opus two number one i think yeah that one's that one's super fun actually you know what all of opus two like one two and three all three of those sonatas are probably some of my favorite i don't know there's something like really light-hearted about beethoven's early sonatas oh hi tsunami Oops. Yeah, Moonlight's number 14. Yeah, I'd probably, like, try out Opus 2, because they're not super hard. They're, like, grade 9, grade 10 level. Um, I think grade 10 level, probably. According to you, how strong is the link between classical music and history? And did history influence music? That is definitely good. Wow, that's a good question. I've learned a lot about world history from music history, so I think that they're, like, incredibly linked. Um art history and music history are like super super linked of course um they share like the the same names so like the romantic era the the baroque era and stuff art and music both kind of use the same terminology um but yeah i would definitely i don't know if i can add a lot of depth to that question just that i i do think that they go together i mean it was because of music history that i started developing a love for history in general so that's all I got there. But it was a really good question. Uh, what is your ultimate goal uh, for your whole piece? What is your ultimate goal for your whole piece? Flight of the Bumblebees. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that would be a really fun piece to play. I actually think um, the, the George Gershwin one, Rhapsody in Blue, it's like 60 pages. It's crazy. It's really long. Um, and it's, it's just a, an amazing piece. Uh, Rhapsody in Blue would be one of mine. And I think that... Um, lists hungarian rhapsody number two or number three i forget which one um it's another really good like 10 minute piece um super super cool i really like valentina lisitsa's list she's a performer and she does a lot of like romantic people ro romantic composers and performances so um i really like her interpretation um she also does a really good moonlight sonata and i'm getting sidetracked oh um, Logan brings up a really good point. So sometime, probably in the next 10 minutes, I actually have it all queued up on my phone. You, okay, so. We're going to do the, the giveaway winner, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully one of you who are here will, that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, hopefully one of you end up as the winners, but yeah, I have everything queued up on my phone. So I think we'll do that, um, towards the end of this video, maybe in like 10 minutes or so. So stay tuned for that. Hope you're excited. <laughs> You want to just list out? Oh, I see Chopin in all caps. Not quite my tempo. Oh, how do you? How are you moving the chat box? Oh, there's a little. Folder. Oh, okay. I'm doing my best to to catch some of your comments. If you think I've skipped over it, you can always feel free to put it again. Yeah. Um, just because it it scrolls down and it's kind of hard to go through it. Where'd that bar go? Oh, there it is. Um, 
Oh, I like that question. Yeah, Valentina Lasitz is awesome. Um, sorry, <laughs> like reading a bunch of ones. Do you think playing an instrument is necessary to listen to music in depth? Oh, I do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I know people say that it doesn't, but I don't. I don't think. I don't think you can possibly uh, appreciate it without actually like playing it. The, like the talent needed to do that stuff is just completely lost when you have absolutely no knowledge base. Yeah, because you can if you don't play an instrument, you can listen to something and determine that it sounds good. Um, you could be like a music appreciator, but at the same time, like, it's, and all of you probably know from learning pieces, uh, you just when you learn a piece, you it, it was like going back to Moonlight Sonata when I first learned how to play that. Every time I like hit a new bar, I was like, I was like enthralled with Beethoven. I was like, I can't believe he did this. This is so cool. And I don't think you get that when you're listening. Like you can be like, yeah, this is cool. But like, I don't know. And I'd never know how to compose if it wasn't for being able to like, I don't know, learn pieces. Because I know some people are like, oh, I play music, but I, or like I write music, but I don't know how to play anything. I don't know where I'm going with that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Paco, to answer your question, do you always continue doing cancer research? Until I die! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, uh, we have no plans on stopping anytime soon. We're having fun with it, yeah. so. Um, oh, yeah. Ev Ev how do you say his name? Kissin. Um, Evegni. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name and I feel horrible. So if any of you can like help me out with the pronunciation of his name, because he's an amazing performer. Um, I based my performance on Liszt's second, third Liebestrom on uh, one of his performances because it was just like so emotional. It was amazing. So I like him. Uh, Saeed, no. We, we haven't... Oh, Lang Lang's good at Liszt too. Yeah, I love Lang Lang. Sorry, I'm just kind of reading. Yeah, that's fine. Lang Lang's etudes, like lists, his his version of lists etudes are like ridiculously good. Mm. Which is better, piano or violin? Which is your just, just piano and TV? You're yeah. asking a piano teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I like string instruments though, so I mostly play. Um, yeah, well, you play guitar, so I mean. That's true. <laughs> I'm like obviously I I would vote piano. It just it makes so much sense. It's all linear. <laughs> oh, Yev Yev Jenny Yev Yev Jenny Yev Jenny Yev Jenny yeah. Kissin. Thank you so much, um, Doctor Quizler. <laughs> Ev oh, Jenny okay. Yev. Oh yeah. Okay. I see what you guys. Are. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Would you recommend me to improve the interpretation of thinking uh, more into the emotional parts? Okay, so you mean um, is it ways to improve your ability to, to play with emotion? Heart I'm, I'm going to assume that's what you mean. Oh, hard G. Yeah. Uh, which one? It's a hard G. Oh, Evgeny. Evgeny. Oh, Evgeny. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this pronunciation thing is complex. Okay. Uh oh, someone doesn't like Lang Lang. That's okay. There's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to playing with emotion. Actually, we did a video on this. Um, we did. I don't know how to link. To, we barely have this video working, so I mean, I don't know how to link to it from here. Well, I guess I could just copy and paste, mm -hmm. but it's a picture with like four really shaped heads in the thumbnail. I think. I like. He just remembers the videos by his thumbnails. I remember them by them all. I watch every video like eight times. I don't. <laughs> I hate watching them. It makes me so uncomfortable. I'm like, I can't. I just can't. I can't bear it. Okay. Um, back to playing. Okay. Yeah. If you're interested in playing with emotion, I, I think that I go in way more depth in that video than I, I'd be able to here. I, I actually think that's the title of it. Just how to play with emotion or something like that. So look it up. Yeah. Okay. What are your thoughts on pieces like uh, 433 Helicopter Quartet or all those pieces that don't seem very musical? I don't know. I'm gonna have to make you write that down right. on our on our notepad here, because I've actually never even heard of those pieces. So 433 helicopter quartet. Are they new? Oh yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Quizzler. G like goat. Which one of which one of the videos was the most fun to record, and which one am I the most proud of? Was that your most fun to edit? Oh yeah, by far. Why? Because it was funny? 
Well, it's more like TV editing. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we actually did like double cameras and stuff. Mm-hmm. That was probably my favorite one to record it's, too. It's, I love that thing. Because I like forced Michael to help me. He's <laughs> <laughs> like his only cameo in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I haven't gotten him in any other videos. I don't know. I was hoping we would do some today, but it's okay. Yeah, um, 15 Piano Player Problems was like a super fun one to do. But my problem is, is I've always wanted to follow that up with something that was like moderately amusing, but I'm afraid of being like the the one hit wonder with the comedy video, you know, like, <laughs> you know how like a lot of movies, it's like the first one's really good, but then you have like really crappy ones after that. I can't. Um, yeah, I don't want to do that. So I'll do another funny video when the time is right. Um, that was probably. Which one are you the most proud? Same one? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I really like how the history one comes out. I'm always proud proud of his editing on those. They're fun. He does like crazy editing on those. Which is my bad guess. Yep. <laughs> I'm already level three. Uh, what mm-hmm. pop classic songs are recommended? Level three, I would definitely try to convince you to get into some of Clementi's sonatinas. Um, that's about the right time to start trying sonatinas. Um, I kind of skipped them when I was that level, when I was first learning how to play piano. And I really regret it because it meant that I had a much steeper learning curve when I tried to do some of the, some of Mozart's Viennese sonatinas and some of the easier sonatas out there. So definitely don't skip Clementi's. They're, they sound really good. They're really fun to play. They're kind of annoying to learn because they're, they're very technical. Um, but that's part of the reason that once you master them, they're super fun to play because there's lots of like fast finger work. Um, otherwise, grade three. I mean, honestly, I'd have to look through some of my books to give you a better answer for that. Um, let me actually grab one of my books here. Oh, as, uh, Oscar, poor little cuddle cat has Oscar, to leave. Yeah. Oscar the the cat in a tsunami. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wrote a story once about a cat that could talk named Tsunami. And I wrote the story as an adult. I just want you to know that. <laughs> it's a good story. I was actually like... It was terrible. The story of Anna Rimo thing. And she's doing okay at it. Yeah. But anyway, I wrote this cheesy story about this, like, cat superhero who was, like, a talking cat who was, like, trying to save the world. So I always wanted to name a cat Tsunami, even though it makes absolutely no sense. I don't know why this cat in the story was named Tsunami either. So, yeah. I call her Tsunam Nom because she likes to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm oh, grabbing one of my books, you know. Oh, what's going on? Is the mic? Uh oh. Oh no, our sound! Oh, is the sound back? Uh, yeah. Oh no, you have to do Paul asks, how does he go about getting a piano teacher besides going to Craigslist? When I was in Toronto, um, tell me if you can't hear for some reason, but it shouldn't be working because yeah, we reconnected it. Um, I did most of my advertising via Kijiji. Well, I guess that's just Canadian, isn't it? If you're can, if you're um, Canadian, Kijiji's in, like it's basically Craigslist, but I found it to be a little bit more um, reputable, and I got really good leads that way. So I think. Um, that can be a way to do it. The Royal Conservatory of Music has <laughs> has an online database where um, registered t- teachers can like make have listings through the Royal Conservatory. So if you go to rcmusic.ca, you, you can find their teachers directory. And I also think that the um, I know in Canada the CFMTA, it's like the Canadian Music Association, something like that. Um, every country has like a I think every country has like a, I don't know, what do you call it? Like a group that standardizes music teachers. So you can go to like, like for me, it's like Saskatchewan Music Teachers Association. I'm listed with them. So people can look me up via that. Um, So look into some of those associations because that's how you'll have a better chance of finding someone who's reputable because not just like any old schmo can sign up on those. You have to like um, pay fees to be a part of the membership and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Will I ever do a guitar cameo on the channel? I... Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe. What would you do if you did a guitar cameo? Here, let me fix this. Oh, man. I've wanted to do, like, pop songs, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Maybe there's some good classical music out there. I, I would really like a... Uh... Have you ever learned classical music? Oh, a little bit. I mean, back in the day. Um, I need, a, like, an acoustic guitar with some nylon strings, because I really love that sound. And, like, 
guitar, but yeah, I'd be down for that maybe far in the future. Guitar music on piano TV. Yeah, that'd be blasphemy, I know, but... Yeah. I'd be cool with that. That's like a... That'd be an easy week for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking at the grade three music. I just can't find the book I'm looking for. <laughs> I will answer that question in a moment. Yeah, we'll have to look into Twitch next time. This is just... It was very last minute almost. Yeah. Get from us. So can you use... So Twitch would be external from YouTube, right? So you would... Yes. I would just like give you guys the link and we'd go to a different Yeah, I believe base. You, can, you can stream on both too. And Twitch, is that the one where I think you were telling you could like use it on your phones and stuff? Oh, uh, that's Periscope. But maybe oh. Periscope. I've never, yeah, obviously I'm a noob for all this stuff. How did you have to be eight? Oh, sorry. You have another... Bella Bartok. Four Children, one and two, um, is pretty good music for 20th century stuff. Anywhere from like a grade two to seven level. So that's another collection. I'm working on it. <laughs> All right, we just did an improv. We should. Uh... Yeah. Okay. You want to do the giveaway? Yeah. Let's, let's try doing that. <laughs> Are you guys ready? I'm not. We have to pull this performance is of some of the more advanced pieces, like the Lieder Strom or Claire de Lune. I, I hope to eventually. There's It's so intimidating because when I did Claire de Lune and when I did Lieder Strom, it, they, they each took me months to, to get to a point of competence. And even then, I have recordings of them, and they're pretty terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, listening back to them, I'm like, oh, I can see why I got a bad mark on these. Um, so one day, I think, like, the more I'm able to do with piano TV... Um, the more then I will have time to practice and do stuff like that. So I like to think there will be a natural evolution. Or maybe I'm just kidding myself, but no, I want to go in order, right? So we'll do like grade three level stuff and then grade four level stuff and so on and so on, I think. Okay, so I have the, the URL here. Amount of commenters, 69. So that means that there's a one in 69 chance that you're going to win this giveaway, which is pretty <laughs> awesome odds. Kat, what are you doing? Hi. She wants to get in on this too. Are you really walking on my shoulder? Oh yeah. Oh my oh my goodness. <laughs> As I get clawed. Okay, pick a random winner. Start. Random. It's like flash names. <laughs> the winner is I'm gonna show you this so you know it's like completely legit. Z oh Zenut Jam. You see that? Alright, Zenut Jam. I'll give you about a week. To get a hold of me, um, contact me. I've I've already talked about this, but if you're on, I wonder if Zenit Jam is here. Maybe not. But anyway, if that's you, um, just contact me via YouTube. Um, I think in like the it's licking my ear. <laughs> is that like very the inside of my ear? <laughs> is that distracting? It's loud. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, yeah, so give me a shout, uh, send me a private message, and if I don't hear from you, I'll do, I'll just do a redraw in about a week. Um, I don't know how to personally contact you, so I'll let you contact me. Oh, he's here too. Yes. Is Zena Jam? Yeah. Ah! Hey, good job! Right. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, that makes it way more fun. <laughs> also, yes, Zena Jam is, like, basically an awesome name. Am I saying, wait. Yeah, it's Zena Jam. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan. Good job. Okay, so contact me via YouTube. It gives my, um, actually, I don't care. I can give you my email right now, too. Um, and then you'll all have my email address. Um, <laughs> Nothing goes wrong with that, right? No, it's, <laughs> my, it's my name. So it's Alicia and then my last initial. So aliciak at gmail.com. So A-L-L-Y-S-I-A-K at gmail.com. And that's all on the YouTube page, yeah, too. So, yes, message me, and we will work out the details and uh, pick some books for you. This is super exciting. I've never done a giveaway before. I know, right? Now I want to do like giveaways every day. I'd be broke. <laughs> can, we do a, can we do a duet? Can we try back in the day? We could probably do Did that. we actually try to do? Well, if we don't oh, with like you with guitar. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. You don't have a guitar here though. No, I don't. No, for, hey, maybe that'll be like a on a future live broadcast. We'll do like some type yeah, of we can playing, something right playing situation, yeah. long distance jam. Yeah. <laughs> Getting over the internet doesn't work. Hey, for those of you who have used, um, oh my goodness, I forget it. Twitch, and what's the other one? Twitch and 
And Search of the P. Periscope. Yeah. Um, for those of you who have used those in the past, um, is it possible to do multiple people? So, like, would it be possible for Logan in Toronto? Oh, yeah. And me yeah. in Saskatchewan, too. Would it? Yeah. So, I don't know if you want to see this guy next time, but just thinking that it could be kind of fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Okay, so oh, I I've got you it. Oh, maybe. Dun dun da 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 dun da 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 dun da. No, we'll do the. <laughs> There's our duet. <laughs> 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 there you go. Yep, and that's uh, what's the other one? The sad one. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, you can play like the cello. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, you guys have any last questions before we go? Yeah, final, like, one minute. Oh, Google Hangouts? That's another one I'll look into. Can you play the Maple Leaf rag? Oh, no! <laughs> Scott Joplin is so hard. I suck at ragtime. I'm really, like, even learning the entertainer took me forever. And I can't play it anymore. I tried learning the Maple Leaf rag once upon a time, but you know, that's a future project. That's on my goals list from, I did a goals video. A okay. while ago, and that's on my list. Any grade five piano pieces? Grade five. Um, not off the top of my head. I need like my books. Got any other questions? I'll flip really quickly. <laughs> no, without garbage. He's engaged to uh, another man. <laughs> yeah, this is Logan. He's a friend. He lives in Toronto. Yeah. Um, my I I live in a house with my. I live three thousand kilometers yeah. away from her. So. Yeah, my fiancé is named Michael, and he is currently snowmobiling. <laughs> Lucky guy. No! Is I it? hate snowmobiling. <laughs> That'd be fine. That's like a Canadian hobby that some of you might not understand. Like, there's so much snow. Okay. Um, oh. What? Last one. What's your favorite symphony? What? Five, four, three. Favorite symphony! Um... I feel like I'm under pressure from time. I can't think of anything. Uh, all I'm thinking of is, like, the standard ones. I really like Tchaikovsky symphonies. Someone has to complicate the question. Do it. Yeah. Like a math question, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, that. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm oh, not done. I will leave. I'm, I'm committed to this, but, like, I don't do well. This was us right before we live streamed. We were just, like, <laughs> like yeah. swearing and, like, Tense and twitchy. Okay. Um. German. <laughs> Greek. Lyric pieces, you can start at about a grade five level. Most of the lyric pieces are going to be too hard, but some of the early ones are doable if you're willing for a little bit, like for a little bit of a stretch. Um, Arietta and like all of the first opus, I think it's opus 12. Um, super, super awesome collection. I really, I've already talked about Greek today, but yeah, that would be, um, I'm just, that's jumping out at me right now oh yeah and there's um album for the young opus 68 by uh robert schumann that's another really good one you don't have to be young to play it if you're an adult you can still play album for the young just like bella bartok's four children i hate how all those old dudes all those old dead dudes wrote songs like for kids and nowadays it's like too hard for kids <laughs> okay all right that was dramatic. I'm sorry. I'll calm down now. Okay. We'll have to do this again, guys, because this is actually really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us a shout if um, you have any ideas. Like, we always read the comments on videos and stuff like that. So if you have any ideas for future webinars and stuff like that. And now you all have my email address. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any ideas, you can also send me a personal email, too. I'm really slow. So you have to understand that if you send me an email, I almost always read it within a couple days. But it sometimes takes me a month to respond because I just have, like, a really bad backlog and... No, I'm not very diligent about that. So, but anyways, I do read everything. So, two men, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mozart in the Jungle. Yes, that is on my list, guys. Okay, we'll have to talk again soon. This is hard to say goodbye. I'm just like, <laughs> see, I keep seeing all the questions. I'm like, oh that, oh that, oh that. Yeah, happy New Year, guys. I'm so pumped that you guys all hung out. Like, we really. We're half expecting, like, no one. <laughs> we were, like, so... We didn't even touch our, like, list of questions. You don't want to know what my favorite color is? Or how tall I am? What our favorite Pokemon is? I'm 5'6". <laughs> my favorite Pokemon is Pikachu. Because I'm boring. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>